Our case is simply this. No, sorry, Joel, Joel Kerry, Jim, Joel, who? Joel Glazer, everyone's favourite Glazer. He sold Manchester United fans promises back in April, back after the collapse of the European Super League, about better communication to the fans between the Glazers and the club. The fact that they cared about us. I was like, wow, they care about us. My heart is, I've got it all wrong, all wrong. Or, no, I haven't. No one has. And nothing really has truly changed between then and now. Seven months on, I want to do a video here to expose more lies that we're still being fed by the Glazers, by everything that's happened. And that's what I'm going to do in this video is expose those. Please drop a like on the video. Please share this around. It's important that these videos with these sorts of messages keep getting pushed back to the surface. So let's talk about the Glazers again. And where else can we start apart from this idea of communication? We were told after the collapse of the European Super League, when the Glazers got caught red handed, trying to steal everything, trying to take, kill Manchester United as a football club, as we know, and run away with all the money, they got caught red handed and apologized profusely. And they promised better communication. What's happened since? Joel Glazers. Been in two fans forum meetings in May and June. I'm going to run into both of those in a bit of detail as this video progresses. But other than that, we've had nothing. Whilst at the same time, you see Joel Glazer. Look at his reaction to what happened in the Super Bowl. They're doing radio interviews, doing interviews with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers YouTube channel on the pitch, presenting the trophy as is tradition out in America when the owners, I think the owner of the NFL teams, present the, the Super Bowl trophy. But I didn't see Joel Glazer on the pitch in 2008 in Moscow. I didn't see him on the pitch at Old Trafford after Fergie's last game. It's, it's a different sort of relationship that he has with Tampa Bay Buccaneers than the Glazers have with Manchester United. And the disconnect now more than ever, it's just growing and growing and growing. It's only getting wider and wider and bigger and bigger. And that vast ocean between the Glazers and Manchester United fans is huge. Insurmountable, I would argue. And nothing has happened between April and November 2021 to change that narrative. But crucially now, we are talking about this fan share ownership scheme that was promised to Manchester United fans back in May 2021 by Joel Glazer, by the Glazer family, as a way for Manchester United fans to take at least part ownership of the club, for us to take the first step in that direction of true fan ownership, of the 50 plus one model that we all campaigned for, that we all protested for. Now, let's speak about the facts first and foremost as we get into this conversation. As I said back in May, this is what the Glazers said. He said, we have previously engaged with the Manchester United Supporters Trust on fan share ownership, and we want to continue and accelerate those discussions together with provisions to enhance associated fan consultation. And that was back in the fans forum in May 2021. Fast forward a month into the one happened in June, and Joel Glazer was put on the spot by an excellent statement from the 11 representatives inside that fans forum meeting. And this is what the statement said. Joel, if you truly do understand the football club you currently own the majority of shares in, then act now. Make the significant changes we have requested. Let us have a proper voice. Give fans the opportunity to buy shares with the same voting rights you have. Do not limit the amount we can buy. We will pay the market rate for them. An important few words there, not limiting the amount the Manchester United fans can buy allowing it to happen at market price and crucially having the same voting rights. Now, the Manchester United uh, at the club officially released a statement this week on this fan share scheme, by the way, that was supposed to be in place by the start of the season. So that was a few months ago. Going to November now, we're no closer to a real true announcement of what there's. There's lots of information we don't know yet in terms of where does the money go that goes. So, I'll explain it all in a little bit of detail a little bit further on, but we don't know much really 
about it yet three months after it was supposed to be launched and if we take a look into the announcement that's been made this week on these shares this is what we know it said that these new shares would be structured as a new class of equity carrying the same voting rights as the b share class owned by the glazer family one source said the initial amount of shares would total 10 million dollars although the number has yet to be finalized the intention would then be to issue further and potentially larger amounts of shares in subsequent years depending on demand from manchester united fans and a statement from must the manchester united supporters trust on that they said must continue to be in discussion with united about the creation of a supporter share ownership scheme no agreement has been reached yet and in the event we do it will be subject to a ballot of our members and wider consultation within the united fan base so we're finally getting the fan share scheme you know brilliant happy days although that becomes slightly less exciting when you properly do look into the numbers which is what i've done here if you take a look at how many shares there are available on the market you've got 30 just under 37 million a shares available that totals with a market current market value today of 15 dollars 92 just under 600 million dollars worth available inside the public market now bear in mind we're being told about 10 million now of course it's going to be slightly different because class b and class a class b shares have 10 times more voting rights than class a shares so let's take a look at the glazers ownership and how much they own because of course they've been cashing out they've been getting money out of manchester united oh they love the club they they, they love it no they just love the fact that the price has gone up so if you look here back in october edward and kevin glazer taking 9.5 million a shares of what i think that's when they convert their that's when they convert their b shares into a shares because glazer shares b shares aren't available on the public market only a shares so if the glazers want to sell they have to convert it to a shares first now the reports there saying that that total of 9.5 million equals roughly eight percent of the glazers total ownership so 166 million dollars there is eight percent of the glazers ownership so let's do a little bit of maths based on that if 166 mil is eight percent that means that their total ownership there would be just over 2 billion. Take off the 166 million and you're looking at roughly just shy of $2 billion that the Glazers own inside Manchester United and the rest being available in the public market. And Manchester United fans, we're being told that we're going to get $10 million worth. If, the, if we're saying the hypothetical situation here based on these figures which are out in the press, if they do own $2 billion worth and we're going to get $10 million as, as, a, as a fan base, that's 0.5% of the total available shares at that voting percentage of, of 10 votes per, per share, which the Class B shares, which the Glazers all own, and this new class of shares for Manchester United fans will be 0.5%. You're taking the piss. You, I mean, I know it's I know it's the first step in that direction, but that's not going to change anything. That won't change anything. And as I said, there are real questions that haven't been answered about this fan share scheme yet. Uh, where does the ten million dollars go, for example? Does that go back into the Glazers' pockets? Are we just paying the Glazers, or is that money going to go into investing into the club? But fans shouldn't be paying for that investment. The Glazers should be paying for that investment. Again, broken promises we're seeing. Uh, of Glazers continuing their investment in Old Trafford and they've they spent 100 mil over 10 years. That's just the annual costs that you have to do to keep a, a structure of the size of Old Trafford running. They've been doing that the whole way through. That's not been them pump, put, putting money into it at all. So more lies. And it just really pisses me off at this point just to see the constant narrative that we're told about changes coming, communications happening. Don't worry about it. Things are going to be different. Things aren't different. Things are exactly the same. And when you see videos like this of Avran Glazer out speaking to his old university, it just it only reiterates just how far away from being a good set of owners the Glazers are. But you got to work extra hard. Same with Cristiano Ronaldo of Manchester United. He joined us when he was 16 years old. And from the day he joined Manchester United, he was the first person to practice and the last person to leave practice. Avram Glazer doesn't even know when we sign Cristiano Ronaldo. Maybe I'm looking into this a bit too much, but no, it's just indicative. Hell, they don't speak that. They don't speak out in public about Manchester United at all. It's the first time I really properly remember Avram Glazer speaking about United. I just hate the Glazers. I really hate the Glazers. And I, I, I hate this notion that other fans have 
of the glade. Oh, mate, United fans can't complain that you just signed Ronaldo for Ronaldo Sancho. No amount of signings, no amount of anything will change how United fans feel about our owners, how disconnected they are, how their model jars completely against what United fans want. We want to win the Premier League. We want to win the Champions League. And their model does not meet that. And uh, it's not about play. Uh, that's what I'm saying. These, these videos are not about players or any bullshit like that. It's about exposing the lies, the constant lies inside the communication, what fans are told, and what the relationship between United fans and the Glazers are. That's what this video was for. I hope it helped you understand what's going on with this fan share scheme. When there are proper updates on it and in terms of the structure, I'll bring them to you. You can get them on United People's TV. Please, as I said, drop a like and share this video because it's important that this story keeps getting talked about, that we don't just forget about it. Uh, because, yeah, love United, I hate Glazer. And until they don't own Manchester United, I will continue to keep pushing videos and stories like this because it's important that we keep talking about it.